of Sophia, and I will also be covering an article to emphasize the efficacy of feminism. This article is called Body Dissatisfaction and Disordered Eating Among College Women in China, South Korea, and the United States, Contrasting Predictions from Sociocultural and Feminist Theories. Unlike Hannah's article, this one sought to compare body image thoughts and dieting disorders using a feminist perspective as well as using a sociocultural perspective. The authors define sociocultural perspective as the Western expectations of how women should look and the westernization of this concept into other countries. This would mean that body dissatisfaction would be most prominent and emphasized in the countries with the most westernization. In this case, the United States would have higher body dissatisfaction than would countries like China or South Korea. Though both China and South Korea have been introduced and have been influenced by Western culture, this theory predicts that it has been less ingrained in their culture and has had a smaller effect on women's predictions of their own bodies. However, these authors pose that feminist theory dictates that body dissatisfaction would be most prominent in the area with the most change in gender role. The authors believe that in the country where there has been the biggest change in social gender role, there has been more pressure placed on women and the need for their bodies to look socially acceptable. Using feminist theory, the authors predict that South Korea would have the highest body dissatisfaction and the United States would have the lowest body dissatisfaction. The studies describing body dissatisfaction comprised of 102 U.S. women, 137 South Korean women, and 102 Chinese women. All of these women were between the ages of 18 and 25. The sample group taken from the United States was from a university in the Mid-Atlantic region. The samples taken from South Korea were from universities in the, in the capital of Seoul and the large city of Kyunji, and the sample groups from China were taken from a large university in the capital of Beijing. The capitals of South Korea and China were used as part of the sample group because they are the cities that are considered to have um, most, the most Western influence in these countries. There were a lot of different measurements used um, through these groups to measure uh, the woman's body dissatisfaction and their dieting behaviors. Some of the measurements for body dissatisfaction included self-reporting questionnaires that contained Likert-type scales in which they would rate their level of body dissatisfaction. For example, they would ask on a scale of one to 10, how satisfied are you with your body image? Or on a scale from one to 10, how satisfied are you with your body weight? Questions like that. Um, another type of measurement is a figure rating scale in which a woman would see pictures of different size women all numbered from one to nine, one being the largest, the smallest woman and nine being the largest woman. They then would select four different body type numbers, one for what they perceive their current size to be, the second for their ideal body size number, the third for the body they perceive to be preferable by other women, and the last to be the body they perceive to be most attractive to men. The measure for dieting behaviors was the um, EDI, or the Eating Disorder Inventory, as explained by Hannah um, in the earlier article discussed. They also included questionnaires that measured sociocultural attitudes towards appearances. All of these measurements indicated that the prediction arrived through feminist theory was most accurate. The highest body dissatisfaction was in South Korea and the lowest body dissatisfaction was in the United States. Thus, feminist theory is an effective theory to understand women's eating disorders and the reasoning behind them. Four minutes, 20 seconds. That was the best one too, I thought. Good, good, good. I think the more you 